few days ago, we came along this course to drop anchor here. We were both accompanied by local marineros. Lily is heading away on Peter's boat, ready to drop the hook. This is the island of Boa Vista. It's also known as the Desert Island for its vast deposits of Sahara sand. It's got some of the most stunning beaches visited by returning turtles. And this bay is a whale nursery. They come here annually to nurse their calves. Okay, new anchorage spot, time to celebrate. It's a glorious day here in the bay. Time for a bath. I wanted to have a look at my anti-felling and how it's doing. Not so good. Man, stuff is already growing on Galapan's hull. And look at the propeller shaft. Oh well, such is life of a sailor. At least the green dreadlocks aren't growing on the waterline. Now let's see how the anchor has set. Didn't check yesterday, but it held fast. But let's just see how it is. My setup is holding well, I'm happy with that. And the anchor has set. It's shallow here, only about three to four meters. Plenty for me. Unfortunately, Peter had to move back a little. His keel was touching a rock. Mauricio and I swam over to Peter and Lily's boat to see what they were up to. We hung out a little, and then we decided to all go to the beach and bar. Usually this place is jumping at the season. But again, thanks to COVID, we have the place to ourselves. Luckily, they had a few beers on hand, just enough for the girls to go and play mermaids. They urged me along so they could show off. Boy, is life hard. What I love about Boa Vista is how there is more of a mix between locals and foreigners, especially here on this part of the beach, as well as the laid-back beach vibe. And it's just minutes away from our boats, man. As they say here, Nita Sabnera.
Later, we ventured back to Sao Rey, the capital of Boa Vista. There you can find most needs cruisers may want. It is still under the shadow of this everlasting annoying pandemic, so more quiet than normal. One of our favorite places to go is this neighborhood called Baraka. The lively working class live here. Thanks to Mauricio's connections, we met Manu here, a friend of Mauricio's. One cool and tough dude. He's been all over and was happy to talk in English with us. We're in good company tonight. Thanks, Mauricio. Mauricio is on with charm and wit. She loves hot foods and can hold her liquor like few have known. And... Mauricio is turning out to be a pretty good mariniere. Yeah. She's... did pretty well sailing. She cleans up everything afterwards. Look, and... She can cook. Masa con bacon. <laughs> the only problem with Mauricio is... <laughs> she can't stop partying sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, yesterday we were partying, then we came back to the boat. At one point, Mauricio said, Should we go back to the city and party some more? I'm like, I don't know if we can. We can't. She's like, I'll go get Peter. <laughs> Luckily, I said, well, I'm going to bed. And she would watch the series for the rest of the night. Yeah. That's okay. Now? It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. We can always party. <laughs> it's just too cool. And then there is... So we're going to try and fix Alex's outboard. It actually, his dinghy flipped over. He, he cleaned it out. But it didn't, uh, I mean, clearly there was some water left in it. Because it's seized up now. Nothing works. The throttle doesn't work. So we really need to take it apart or it's just going to get killed. So the gas tank on this leaks no matter what you do. I'm going to try and fix that while we're doing this too. Because as soon as you touch it, this little hose pops off. And then the gas ends up everywhere. I loosened everything up already. So it's pretty simple. It's got a little cover to keep the debris out carb we're gonna disconnect the choke already disconnected the throttle cable you can see everything's rusty we're just gonna try and clean everything up and put it back together here's the, here's the carb and here's the biggest problem is the throttle just doesn't isn't free anymore and what that means is everything in this carb is gonna be the same way we're gonna have to clean it right up out the jets and everything and then hopefully this throttle cable is still loose enough i think it is yeah, maybe and then we've got to free up the cylinder clean everything out and away we go while we clean up the carb take the spark plug out throw in some penetrating fluid or well, I'm going to throw in some mystery fluid. Ten funzioni in one. So I'm thinking it's from Italy. So we're going to fill this up as best we can. Dump a bunch of this in here. Roll it around. And hopefully that'll free up the rings so we don't ruin everything and I don't have to take the cylinder apart. So when you're taking a carb apart, <clears throat> your goal is to really get it clean. That's the most important thing. But right now, I gotta get it so it's not all seized up. You see there's water in there. That's salt water in the fuel. Anyway. So he never cleaned out the, uh, the salt water very well. In fact, it's, it's full of, all that green stuff is not fuel. You can see the salt built up in there. There's salt and yep. gunk and corrosion and all sorts of crap which means it's gonna be in these jets. And that's the part that sucks because it just won't run right until we address that. The throttle is just really jammed. You can see corrosion in there. I don't know, we will see. I'm just gonna keep spraying stuff and I really kinda of hope to not have to take out the throttle shaft. Because, well, actually I can do that, it's just a little clip. I can just see losing this into the ocean or somewhere. Ooh, there's the clip. And then take off the throttle plate. 
again, these are all really things you, it's way better to avoid doing this than have to do it because if you break a little part, you usually can't get them where we are. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Ugh. Yeah, just needs to be cleaned. Part, part of taking a carburetor apart is just remembering how to put it back together. <laughs> That's, honestly, that's what a lot of people just screw up. I took the float out, and it actually looks pretty clean. The seat's not too bad. I'm gonna take out this jet. And you can see, there's a lot of corrosion on it. But, I don't know if you can see that hole through the camera. Yeah. You can see that see. that jet is actually clean, which I'm surprised. So I'm mostly gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna look at this jet behind it. If I can get it out. I don't really want to bang on this too much. Try and get this pushed out. Ah. There's gonna be some problems. These little holes have to not be filled with crap, and they are. I'm gonna figure out a way to make sure they're clean. Oh, you know what? They're surprisingly clean for the corrosion. So we're gonna leave them alone. The less stuff we have to mess with, the better. So that's one jet. I think that's the main jet, but I gotta be honest, I really don't know at this point on this car, but I don't care. I just know it's clean. Here's the next jet. And it's got the same type of holes. It's got some corrosion. I can just polish off almost with my fingers. And I can see through two out of three of those holes. So this top one, yeah, no, that's good too. There's a little bit of stuff in there. It just kind of blew out. So we're gonna count that as lucky. And lucky we will be. Great to have you along on this voyage. Give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this series. Me and Galapan promise you a good time every Wednesday. So welcome aboard. Mm -hmm.